Um, sauna, since you've been here last, boy, um, I've read so much stuff about the sauna, about the benefits of the sauna, and then you published that thing saying there's a 40% decrease in mortality on uh, basically uh, uh, on everything. Well, I didn't publish it. Someone else published it. But oh, I you, was... I'm sorry, you tweeted it. Yes. About this article. Sorry. <laughs> I did. I wrote an article on some of the health benefits of the sauna, and I had predicted that I thought it would play a role in longevity based on some other evidence. And then this study came out showing, indeed, that it, there is a link between um, sauna use and a decrease in all-cause mortality. So people dying from cancer, from cardiovascular disease, from a variety of different diseases. Um, and that was like... A big de cool. decrease, right? Like 40% yeah, it was huge. or something? Yeah. So, well, it, there was a dose-dependent... Um, decrease in all-cause mortality. So, so men that used the sauna once a week compared to those that used it two to, th time, two to three times a week, they had a decrease, 24% uh, decrease in all-cause mortality. And men that used it like four to seven times a week had a 40% decrease in all-cause mortality. So when I say a 40% decrease in all-cause mortality, I mean over the time span that these, these men were followed, which was 20 years. So they're following these men for 20 years. They were in their between 50 to 65 um, when the study started, and those men that had been using the sauna more frequently had a 40% reduction in, you know, dying from many causes that aren't accidental. That's and, amazing. Yeah, it's super, super cool. And, um, you know, one of, part of it, there's a lot of things going on with the sauna. I just actually, the place I'm staying at has a steam shower, so I just had a steam shower before I came here. I'm all endorphin buzzed and feeling good. Does that good. work just as good? Um, it's, you know, it, it doesn't get as hot as like a typical dry sauna where, you know, the air is, it's like 174, 79 degrees Fahrenheit, which Jesus is pretty damn hot. Jesus Christ. It's that's hot. how hot they get? Yeah. That's like, like in my gym, that's, that's pretty, pretty much the, the temperature. It's like 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's hot. Um, steam showers, they're, they get hot and I definitely feel you know, my heart racing. So what happens when you're in heat is you, your heart starts to race, like much like cardiovascular exercise, where your heart st starts to beat like between 100 and sometimes 150 beats. Like, you know, so it's like, it's pretty fast. And um, part of the benefit of that is you have increased plasma and blood flow to the heart. So the heart's actually doing less work than it normally would do. Um, but that's, and that's part of the cardiovascular benefits that are associated with like exercise and sauna use. But the sauna, in addition to that, has other effects. So, you know, heat stress is a stress, as is exercise. And, you know, the stress activates all these stress response mechanisms in the body. And, and that's really good. And that's part of the benefit from exercise. It's part of the benefit from any type of, you know, good stress. So heat specifically will activate something called um, heat shock proteins. So it's a gene that makes something called heat shock proteins. And they're a class of proteins that are activated by heat. So when you exercise and your core body temperature raises, they get activated. And heat shock proteins are pretty awesome because they are able to prevent a certain type of damage that accumulates in our cell from, from happening. And if you think about the causes of aging, it's an accumulation of damage that's happening in the cell. Like if you're looking at it at the molecular level, the cellular level. And part of that damage occurs in proteins that we make. You know, so genes are, DNA is the genetic code. It makes RNA. RNA gets translated into proteins. And proteins are doing all the work inside of our body. You know, so for example, glutathione peroxidase is a very potent antioxidant. It's an enzyme that's using glutathione to do all this great antioxidant stuff. That's a protein. It's the type of protein. So proteins in our, inside of our cells, as we age, they start to dysfunction. They start to aggregate. They aggregate in our blood vessels, can lead to plaques. They aggregate in our brains, amyloid beta plaques. And this happens, you know, this increases as we age. But heat shock proteins prevent that from happening. And so heat stress activates them. And when you, when you have heat stress and they're, and they're activated, they're actually activated for a long period of time. In some cases, it can be like a couple of weeks. So it's, it's kind of like you do this heat stress, and then two weeks later, you still have these activated heat shock proteins, which are you know, making, preventing all this damage from accumulating in, in your cells. What's really interesting is that if you look in like worms or flies, you expose them to one heat shock, meaning like you, you, know, you increase the temperature uh, for like 15 minutes, and it increases their lifespan by like 15%. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, also, people that have a certain variation of the heat shock gene that makes these proteins, that makes them active all the time, they're more likely to be a centenarian. So they, they actually have a higher chance of living to be 100. So, you know, the, there's definitely evidence that these heat shock proteins are involved in longevity. You know, we know the mechanism. We know that, you know, heat helps, you know, activate them and they're doing all this good stuff. They also prevent muscle atrophy. And that's been shown like in mice, for example, um, if, if you make a, you know, a mouse immobile so it can't move like its hind limb, for example, for like seven days and you let it like use kind of like a sauna where it's like a whole body heat shock for 30 minutes a day, they are able to regrow their muscles faster and they have less mus muscle atrophy than mice that are not exposed to the heat but are also immobile.